Hi model builders and welcome back to the workbench. My uh, rule of only building Ford model kits is going to be uh, broken here briefly because I'm going to be doing this Triumph GT6 kit for a uh, challenge. This is a uh, challenge where a group of us had um, anonymously sent each other mystery model kits so that uh, we pulled names from a hat and did exchanges and you didn't know what you were going to get and I wound up getting this Triumph GT6 kit. This is a Lindbergh kit and uh, it actually is an old pyro kit if you know anything about pyro. They were from the 1960s and they were a lesser brand model kit compared to the likes of AMT and Ravel. And this was one of their their final car kits that they did before they got absorbed into uh, Lifelike and later Lindbergh. Um, this is the final reissue of this thing, the most recent one. And it really doesn't differ from the original very much, but uh, it's going to be a very unusual kit to build. So I wanted to do a quick introduction, uh, ex excuse me, introduction to this so that you could see what exactly you get. Um, I actually had one of these kits when I was much younger and never built it because of the complexity of it. So you get a chrome tree. The chrome quality is really very good. Um, very impressive, although there is some stuff on here that is questionable why it's chromed, such as the uh, exhaust system. I guess you wouldn't really want that to be chrome. Um, and there's some curious drag racing parts in here that don't make any sense because there's no V8 option or slicks or anything like that. So The real uh, unusual part about this, though, is the body. Um, first of all, the doors are separate and are designed to hinge, so, you know, that's going to be fun. But here's the real problem with this kit, and that all the body parts are separate, and uh, you have to glue the sides of everything to the tops of everything. So you just get this roof and the top of the bonnet, and then here's your individual parts. You have to glue the, scent, the side fenders onto the bonnet, and then the body sides get glued onto that roof piece. And that's why I never built the kit that I had when I was a kid, because the alignment and attachment of these side pieces to the roof was just uh, hopeful at best. <laughs> now back then I didn't have any fancy adhesives. I only had regular testers tube glue. Um, hopefully now with the uh, advent of things like that, uh, we'll be able to put this thing together. But uh, these pyro kits were known for having these side pieces and were not the easiest to put together. So anyway, I just wanted to show that to you before I begin the construction process. It uh, comes with a rather extensive G decal sheet as well. It's your chrome or your clear pieces. And it comes with four very narrow tires. And then this rather extensive decal sheet, but uh, <clears throat> some, of the, some of the decals are a little silly. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you're going to be putting on sponsor decals like that on a vintage sports car. Um, I don't know that I'll use any of these decals, but just wanted to show you the sheet in case you pick one of these kits up or were interested. So, it doesn't get very good reviews online, not surprisingly, and it's going to be a, this is a model car build challenge, and it's going to be a challenge. So anyhow, I wanted to show that to, to you quickly here before I started on it, just so you can see what you get. And I will come back as work has progressed, or maybe not till the very end, and then show you the completed product. But that's what we're going to be working on next. This very strange blast from the past. Triumph GT6 kit from Pyro. Sold to Lifelike Industries in 1972. Moved to Lindbergh. And Lindbergh, of course, now is owned by Round 2. So there you go. This version is from 2009. 
And when this one came out, these molds were already 40 years old. So here we go. I'll check back with you when I've got some uh, work done to it and we'll see how I'm making out. All right, before we get to the final product, I wanted to point out some uh, some issues with the instruction sheet. Really, there's one uh, major one, and that is this item here they show as the pedals on the floor. These are not the pedals uh, for the floor. It does not have any pedals in the kit. These are the brake master and clutch master cylinders, and they are supposed to go on the firewall, on top of the firewall on the driver's side, on this top piece. So they got that wrong because whoever was drawing, drawing these instructions didn't know what the heck they were even looking at. Um, the other curiosity is they show you two places that the uh, engine and exhaust go in, both in step four and in step five. I'm not sure why that is. Um, that's kind of it for the instructions. Just wanted to point that out. If you're building this thing, it's one major faux pas you might make. Um, trying to put it together. You're going to put uh, your master cylinders on the floor. Don't do that. Okay, and here we go with the finished product. I've decided that uh, the brand Pyro is named for how you feel after building one of these kits. You want to be a pyromaniac and set the thing on fire. Um, <laughs> This kit, uh, it actually went together well up to a point. Um, I was actually kind of surprised. The fit of things and so on was actually pretty good, but it all fell apart in final assembly. So we'll get to that. But this car, um, it was kind of a challenge. This is not for a beginner. If you are a person who's never built a model kit, but you maybe have a GT6 and you want to build a kit of your car, get somebody who's a good model builder to do this for you. Otherwise, you're going to be very frustrated. You're absolutely going to want to use some type of uh, super glue type glue to put this thing together. The glue spots for all the parts are very tiny and they don't really want to hold very well. So you need something that's stronger than regular plastic cement in, in my opinion opinion and experience with this thing. So let's give it a little spin on the rotisserie here. And you know, it, it's a shame. It, it really does look pretty good for the most part. But as I spin it around here, you'll see where there's issues <laughs> with fit and uh, so on. So just disappointing um, the final result here. But there's a lot of nice detail made into this thing, and uh, it has the potential to be a really nice kit when you're done. If you are the kind of person who can take a lot of time and fuss around and fiddle with it and file and sand and put it back together and take it apart 1,400 times, it is possible to build this and have it look like it does on the box. Um, although I think the guy that built those kits for the box art probably was either some type of alien life form or just the most patient human being in the planet. <laughs> so with that said, let's get into it. So the body shape and so forth on this is actually pretty good. Um, the dimensions look good. All the trims nicely done on there. You can pick a lot of that out with paint. Um, there are no clearer plastic tail light lenses you got to paint all those on the back there um, you know the bumpers are good and so on um, God, this three-quarter shot here just looks hideous let's spin it around a little farther here uh, we'll look at this side which is better so oh, pardon me lost control of my camera there so this kit uh, as you noted in the original opening of the box comes with separate doors that uh, are designed to, to hinge and open. Mine are glued shut. Uh, it was just way easier to get on with my life than to try to get those doors to, to fit properly and function. So that's one of the many parts that has been left off. The side windows also 
left those out. They don't fit uh, very well. Uh, gave up on those very quickly. Um, the seat belts, I just didn't care for. I thought they looked a little hokey when they laid in there on the seats, so I left those off. And the rear leaf spring, um, I tried gluing that in at least twice, maybe three times. And uh, after final assembly, it uh, broke free and fell out again, and now there's really no way to get it in there. So you wind up with those leftover parts if you build it the way I did. So we'll uh, look under the hood, or the bonnet, first of all. And there is a fair amount of detail under here, to a degree. Um, in certain areas there is. The top of the firewall has got a lot of nice detail. Most of it's molded in. The engine's kind of not really too super detailed. Um, considering the size of the car, it's not too bad. Same goes with the suspension. It's okay. But uh, it's, it's a little bland by today's standards. And the firewall itself is just one big flat piece of plastic with some sinkholes in it. So that's not too great. The tires on this thing are, uh, you know, there's no real tread. They look like they're bald. The only wheel choice is these stock steelies, which honestly I can't recall having seen but maybe one or two GT6s in my entire life that actually came with those. Most of them have uh, wires or, or aluminum wheels nowadays. Which is a frustrating point about this uh, thing. If Back in the day when I had bought the Lindbergh kit when I was a kid, I bought it because on the box art it showed it with like some Panasport type mag wheels or mini lights and they look great and then you get the kit home and you open it up and you find these you know bland chrome steelies in there so that was a disappointment and that's something you want to be aware of if you're looking at the older kit it doesn't come with with better wheels that's all you get the multi-piece body and bonnet wing combinations here mostly goes together good uh, you can see there's some gappage issues there along that roof line, but back here it got pretty good. The back of the car, it's, you know, you see these giant cavernous gaps here for the rear body panel. Um, a little prior planning, you probably could have got that to fit better, but uh, like I did, I waited until the end to put that rear body panel in and then found out I had these massive gaps. So this side, the side panel doesn't fit too bad, and you, I did wind up with some gaps uh, there above the doors, but uh, was able to fill it in with the slow zap um, CA glue. The windows fit just barely. There's virtually no ridge around them to glue them in place. Um, the windshield on mine does not fit very well. I'm not sure why. But there's gaps around it. You can see there at the top. There's an unsightly gap there. Um, so that was an issue. The rest of the parts kind of fit together pretty good. The only thing that doesn't really fit together where I have my final assembly problems is in this firewall area. I'm not sure where I'm wrong. But these gaps are way too big and the body of this car does not sit low enough on the frame at the front, which is why my bonnet doesn't fit. So I'll get to that a little bit more in a minute here. Also, the doors have these unsightly dents or divots in them. And those are from where the uh, door cards attach on the inside. And I didn't actually really notice those until I had put some paint on it. And uh, when I said, nah, the hell with it figuring that this kit wasn't going to be too remarkable. And I was right. The interior detail is not very good. Um, the seats are really nice. I'm sorry, I probably can't get you much of a, a shot in here, but the seats are really nice. The steering wheel's kind of plain. The uh, dash has, you know, it's got enough detail. My dash, however, did not fit properly. Um, you glue it to the firewall, and it sat too far forward. I could not put the body shell down on top of the dash because it was too far forward. So I ended up taking it apart and then gluing it to the cowl or the scuttle. And that seemed to solve the problem with that. 
But then putting the steering wheel in, the glue points for that are just unbelievably bad. And unfortunately, everything's painted black in the interior, so you really can't see the detail. I'm sorry. So we'll flip it over here and I'll show you the underside. So the frame detail isn't too bad. Um, Lindbergh's got their name cast in the bottom of the floor pan. You can see that there's a gap here between the front floor and rear floor pans. Um, that could potentially be contributing to my fitment problem, but actually it seems to be a height issue more than a distance issue. The exhaust is bizarre, uh, how low that hangs. The unsightly muffler that's two pieces. I dechromed the exhaust and just painted it aluminum. And there's all sorts of, you know, gaps everywhere here and there. And there should be a leaf spring under there, but now there's not. So that's kind of what you got. It, it was going together and really starting to look like something I was going to be quite pleased with. And then I went to put the bonnet on. Now there are hinges and this bonnet will hinge and work very nicely. But the problem is the fitment, when I have the hinges on, the bonnet only wants to close about this far. <laughs> and that's all you get. So it sticks up and it looks unsightly and I didn't look like that. So I took the hinges off and then just tried to slide the bonnet down over and kind of fit it that way. And well, I'm trying to do this with one hand, but as you can see, it's not really fitting very well. And also this, you know, the gap down here is just atrocious. And again, that's not the problem really. The problem is that this part of the body is not low enough on the frame for this to sit down the whole way. So the bonnet really screws everything up. Um, if I displayed this car with the bonnet hinged and with a prop rod in there so you could see the engine, it would probably look pretty good. Am I going to do that? I don't know. The uh, Rocker stripe, I, that does not come in the kit. I borrowed that, uh, it cut that from a, uh, a decal sheet from a MPC 73 Mustang. I just trimmed some of the decals down and used those for that. Try to give it a little pizzazz. That's the only thing that doesn't come in it. Everything else here you see comes with the kit, so that's horrible. <laughs> that's just horrible. So there you go. Um, I'd like to set it on fire, but I won't. I'll put it in a display case along with my other cars and you'll get to see it there if you ever were to uh, come into the house. But that's kind of what you get. Um, if you spend enough time on it, you could probably get things to fit eventually with a great deal of work. But as a builder kit, for the average hobbyist, this thing's pretty awful. So there you have it. That's the review of the Lindbergh Triumph GT6, an old pyro kit from 1969. What more can I say? I'm kind of disappointed. Thanks for watching.